It's the ongoing relationships and meeting people you have already dealt with before and cementing those ties mm -hmm. that I think has been uh, very crucial uh, for me. And, and uh, uh, so it's what ha happens outside the conference rooms often that yes. is uh, more valuable. The main thing that has come through as a, a theme is the continuing disagreement or conflict between people who focus on reproductive rights, reproductive health, and the well-being of individual women, and people who focus on the macro-demographic problems of, associated with rapid population growth and uh, demographic policy and family planning as an instrument of uh, social development rather than as a means of improving the quality of life of individuals. And this argument has been going on since the early 1990s and what's lacking is conversation that would identify what facts do we need to move beyond this discussion, to resolve these questions and to get together. And I feel that this pulling one side against the other is probably not good for either side. What I would say it's like serendipity. You, you, you learn just by meeting people or just thinking about the paper you heard or a title of a poster would make you pause and think, so I think it's very useful. Sadly, I think when I, my, my, my gut feeling is one of frustration, and it's frustration with uh, something that often frustrates me about the demographic research community, is the lack of consideration of what our work means um, as far as implications and how we might make our research more meaningful when it comes to the public good. I'm increasingly focusing my research on youth issues and so I'm looking at the different aspects of kind of transition to adulthood and there are many sessions about that. Uh, there are no easy answers or no silver bullets but we know that we have to improve the quality of education significantly, we have to make it more relevant to the labor market, uh, we have to make sure that people acquire skills and not just credentials. Uh, and we also have to take into account that uh, the people's, the, the personal lives, like the marriage and family formation side, interacts very strongly with the professional lives of people. So, so I think there are definitely a lot of policy lessons that can be learned from that. What I am thinking about and would like to see more thought given to is what will the world be like in maybe 50, or 75 years when global population growth has come to an end. Do we have the intellectual and demographic tools to think about that? And I, I, I believe that we don't. So I would like to spend a little more of my effort thinking myself about what will the world be like when population growth ends and what intellectual tools and data do we need to prepare for that situation. I see, of course, the, the, the end of the demographic transition in Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, as a major issue, because uh, we know that it's uh, happening, it's uh, going on, but it's very, very slow. And uh, will uh, that part of the world be able to build the human capital and to uh, safeguard the environment uh, the way other regions in the world have been able to do, it's a big question mark. But there are many other issues like uh, subfertility, depopulation in some parts of the world, aging, uh, rapid population growth in sub-Saharan Africa, a dwindling population elsewhere. So the world is very fragmented uh, demographically and I think that's reflected pretty well in this conference as well. My, my field is population and environment and I think the big, is it an elephant in the room? Because it's recognized at this point, so that's good, is climate change. Um, with the plenary session devoted here at the meetings to population and climate change, that's a huge, I think, step in the right direction that the link between demographics
demographics and environmental change is gaining recognition. It's hugely important that demographers are listened to because it's uh, the population dimension of environmental change is so much more than just population size. And like Wolfgang Lutz was mentioning last night, uh, demographers are really good about thinking about differentials in population um, with regard to climate change, how different uh, Portions of the population will be differentially impacted by climate change, the way different proportions of the population have contributed to climate change and all this. It's more than just about global population size, and demographers can shed light on some of those nuances, I think, in a, a 